I labored over this video, y'all. I almost didn't post it. It's been done for weeks because my inner critic said, there is no way this tooth is what you think it is. But obviously I decided to do it. And the reason is because I want your opinion. Some of you out there are very knowledgeable and know a whole lot about shark teeth, and I want to know what you think. So here it is, potentially the rarest shark tooth I have ever found. Just flip that tooth out. Looks like a worn angie. Bet that'll clean up decent though. So I cleaned this tooth up. Out there I thought it was worn angie but now that I take a closer look at it, I don't know. Look at this. There is not a hint of serrations anywhere on this tooth. Look at that. I mean, granted, I can see it's worn, but look right here. That is a crisp edge right there, right on the inside of that cusp. So let's look at some other worn teeth and see if you can still see some serrations on those. So here we have an Angus Dyden, very worn. Look at that edge, see if you can see any serrations. Yep, right there. See them up along that edge? There's some serrations right there. All right, and here's a Megalodon. This thing has been hammered, I think we can agree. Let's see if we can see some serrations on that one. Those look like serrations to me. See those little bumps right there? Very worn Angus Sidon. No problem seeing serrations on this one. See them right there? See the little lines on the enamel up on top? All right, and here's a Megalodon tooth. Easy to see those serrations, even though it's very worn. Another Angus Stiden. There's some serrations on that side. Here's a little Megalodon tooth, very worn. Look at that, almost completely smooth on the edges, but still right there, you can see some serrations, right there. All right, this tooth came from a spot that has really worn down teeth. There you can see some serrations right there. See those little bumps right on the edge? Yeah, right there, they're clear there. All right, so this is a Mako. This didn't originally have serrations. Edge is pretty sharp. Looks a lot like the edge on that tooth, doesn't it? All right, so here is a tooth that has been ground almost to nothing. Let's see what we can see. Nothing there, nothing there. Nothing there, nothing there. You might be thinking, oh look, there's a case of a ground tooth with no serrations, but let's look at that edge. It is almost ground like it's been on a grinding wheel. Look at that. All right, remember the edge of that tooth I showed you at the beginning? It did not look like it had been on a grinder, that flat part right there. Near a meg tooth, very beat. I don't see any serrations on this one either, but look at the edge right there. It's chipped up and ground down just like that other tooth. So that's how you get the serrations off to just completely grind them. Let's think about this. Do you mind if I move some dirt while I think? So, serrations are gonna be there. 
in all but the most extreme cases. And in those cases, the edges are so ground down that it's actually flat. The tooth that we looked at that's in question does not have that ground down look. Those edges are pretty sharp. Um, we find oligocene, miocene, pliocene, and pleistocene things here in South Carolina, low country where I hunt. So I started thinking, maybe there's an outlier. Maybe this is an otodus. That is an eocene, paleocene tooth. So the chances are extremely slim. All right, so now you know what all the fuss is about. So take a few minutes to ponder, think about it, maybe do some Googling. Let me know what you think in the comments. And while you're at it, watch this video that Diva made about the biggest Megalodon tooth she has ever dug. All right, there's an Otodus. This one's from Morocco. No serrations. All right, side by side. Don't those look similar? Similar root structures, similar cusps. They're even a similar position. All right, there's the back. They even look similar from the back. The cusps, I mean, look at those cusps. Almost identical. So, I mean, very close, but because of where I found it, I am almost 100% certain that there is no way this can be an Otodus. It's just too big of a time gap for them to be here in the low country. That's a bone. Okay, more pondering. It's not going to be an Angostein because there's clearly not enough wear to completely erase the serrations on this thing. It's not an Otodus because Otodus are too old to be found here in the low country of South Carolina. What could this thing be? I'm starting to think of a very, very rare species we have sometimes called Megalolamna paradoxodon. I've seen some at my buddy Jedi Master's place in Peru that are between an inch and a half and two inches. And I'm lucky enough uh, that the Weasling found one diving with me about 10 years ago. Um, and I'm going to show you that one in just a second. Uh, and that one is probably about an inch long. But this tooth is huge for that species. If that's what this is, this is 2 and 7 sixteenth inches. There's an article out there uh, on the internet. You can Google it. And it says that the average size of these things is between an inch and a half and two inches. So if that's what this is, this is the biggest one ever found. All right, here's the Weasling's tooth. Got those triangular cusps, that big U-shaped root, no serrations. Okay, there it is. Let's take one final look. Not a hint of serrations anywhere on this tooth. And it's got a pretty sharp edge, especially on the inside of this cusp here. There was never any serrations on this tooth. I mean, I'm not definitely saying that it's a Megalamna paradoxodon, but that's the only thing I can think of that it could be. What do you think? I really appreciate y'all watching this. I know it's not the normal video I put up, but I think it's pretty interesting, especially when we can find something that's, I mean, I haven't really seen before. It's a puzzler. Definitely leave your comments below and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Until then, happy hunting.